The Battle of the Little Bighorn, famously known as Custer's Last Stand, marked a historic clash between the United Forces of the Lakota and Northern Cheyenne Tribes and the 7th Cavalry of the United States Army. This pivotal event, one of the most renowned in the Indian Wars, unfolded over two fateful days on June 25th and 26th of 1876 in the Eastern Montana Territory along the banks of the Little Bighorn River. At the helm of the U.S. Cavalry Detachment was the famous Lieutenant Colonel George Armstrong Custer. Tragically, or triumphantly, Custer's entire unit met their demise in this battle. The backdrop of this conflict lay in the simmering tensions between the Sioux and Cheyenne Indians who had left their reservations in late 1875, protesting against the continued intrusion of white settlers into their sacred Black Hills. These defiant Native American groups, led by the illustrious warrior Sitting Bull, assembled in Montana to assert their claim to the ancestral lands. Following two previous victories over the U.S. Cavalry, their resolve to fight further hardened in the summer of 1876. In response to a report from an Indian inspector that indicated hostility among the Lakota and Northern Cheyenne associated with Sitting Bull and Crazy Horse, U.S. forces were dispatched on November 9, 1875. The lure of gold in the Black Hills was another factor driving the military engagement. Like it usually was, the draw of money was pushing settlers and um, expansion of U.S. into territories they're not supposed to be in. Lieutenant Colonel Custer, leading the largest contingent with General Alfred Terry's command, arrived at an outlook 14 miles east of the Little Bighorn River on the night of June 24th of 1876. The rest of the column advanced towards the mouth of the Little Bighorn to block potential escape routes for the Indians. Meanwhile, two Crow Indian scouts were sent ahead to assess the situation. They returned with a critical warning of a vast Indian encampment at the Little Bighorn River. Regrettably, Custer chose to disregard this crucial information, dividing his regiment into four groups with intentions to press ahead with the attack, believing that the Indians would flee upon seeing the approaching soldiers. Thus, on June 25th, Custer's men moved forward with disastrous consequences. Lacking precise knowledge of the encampment size, Major Marcus Reno was ordered to initiate the attack, positioning his squadron of 175 soldiers at the southern end of the Indian village. However, they swiftly realized that the Lakota and Northern Cheyenne forces were far larger and showed no signs of retreat. Reno dispatched a message to Custer, but received no reply. Consequently, Reno's troops advanced northward, halted their exchange due to fear of entrapment, dismounted, and engaged the village from a distance. After approximately 20 minutes, with only one casualty and no sign of Custer's promised reinforcements, Reno ordered a retreat into the nearby timber and brush along the river. They were relentlessly pursued by a mix of Cheyenne and Sioux soldiers, um, sustaining casualties as they fled. Continuing their retreat uphill to the bluffs east of the river, Reno's force encountered a squadron under Captain Frederick Benteen. Benteen had been seen by Custer to prevent Indian escape through the upper valley of the Little Bighorn River. His timely arrival on the bluff saves Reno men from potential annihilation. Although the combined forces were later joined by a small contingent escorting Pen uh, Benteen's pack train, they did not advance towards Custer's position for at least an hour, despite the sound of intense gunfire from the north. This delay led to criticism that Benteen had failed to follow orders to march to the sound of guns. Meanwhile, Custer had planned to strike the northern end of the Indian encampment simultaneously with Reno's southern attack. However, Custer underestimated the challenging terrain he had to traverse before launching his assault, navigating bluffs and ravines. As he finally arrived at a position from which to attack, Reno had already been repelled by the Indians who detected Custer and his men approaching from the opposite end of the village. The Cheyenne and Sioux crossed the river and pushed into the advancing soldiers, driving them back to a long elevated ridge to the north. Concurrently, a force of Sioux under Crazy Horse's command rapidly moved downstream and executed a sweeping arc encircling Custer and his men. As the Indians closed in on Custer, situated some three and a half miles north of Reno and Benteen, Custer ordered his men to shoot their horses and create a makeshift barrier. 
Unfortunately, this provided minimal protection against the hail of bullets and arrows, and Custer, along with his 210 men, succumbed to the relentless assault in less than an hour. Notably, the Lakota and Cheyenne outnumbered the U.S. forces roughly 3 to 1. Following the decimation of Custer's troops, the Lakota and Cheyenne turned their attention to the remaining U.S. forces under Benteen and Reno, who had finally responded to the audible fighting in Custer's vicinity. Over the next 24 hours, these forces engaged in a grueling battle until the arrival of additional troops under General Terry from the north finally arrived and secured the U.S. lines. With the defenses bolstered, the Indians retreated southward. By the time General Terry arrived, the Indians had removed their deceased and wounded from the battlefield. However, the bodies of the fallen U.S. soldiers remained where they had perished, many of them stripped and mutilated, making identification challenging. Despite medical treatments, six wounded soldiers later succumbed to their injuries. Custer's lifeless body was discovered near the hill summit, now marked by a memorial bearing the names of the U.S. soldiers who participated in the battle. Although he had been shot in the temple and chest, his body remained largely unaltered, possibly because he was clad in buckskin rather than in military uniform. Along Custer, alongside Custer, 210 men met their end while another 52 lost their lives under Reno's command. They were given hasty burials while an estimated 60 Indian warriors perished in the battle. Pretty crazy numbers uh, compared to U.S. deaths and Lakota and Cheyenne deaths. This tragic encounter, which occurred shortly before the, national, the nation's centennial, significantly shifted public sentiment against the Native Americans. The U.S. Army responded by deploying more troops to the region, aiming to quell the Indians and exact revenge for the Battle of Little Bighorn. It took three years for, for an Army court uh, inquiry to investigate the battle in 1879. During the proceedings, the actions of Reno, Benteen, Terry, and Custer were scrutinized. Testimonies portrayed Reno as a drunk and a coward, while Benteen was chastised for disobeying Custer's orders. General Terry's belated arrival was also a contributing factor. However, the primary cause of the U.S. defeat was attributed to flawed intelligence and poor communication. Both Reno and Benteen's military careers were subsequently cut short. In the same year as the military investigation, the Little Bighorn Battlefield was designated as a national cemetery under the War Department's administration. In 1881, a memorial was erected over the mass grave of the 7th Cavalry soldiers, U.S. Indian scouts, and other personnel who perished in the battle. In 1940, the jurisdiction of the battlefield was transferred to the National Park Service. Over time, public sentiment regarding Custer's image and the Battle of Little Bighorn evolved as awareness of the mistreatment of the Native Americans during America's westward expansion group. In 1991, the U.S. Congress changed the battlefield's names from Custer's Battlefield National Monument to Little Bighorn Battlefield National Monument, mandating the construction of an Indian memorial. Today, additional red granite memorials pay homage to the Native American warriors who fought in the battle, including Cheyenne warriors Lame White Man and Noisy Walking, as well as Lakota warriors Long Road and Dog's Backbone. The Little Bighorn Battlefield National Monument is situated in the southeastern corner of Montana, near Crow Agency, and is administered still by the National Parks Service.